Hey guys, I'm going to talk to you about solenoid pulse control for screw compressor applications using the DE3000. Now, the low, every screw compressor has a load valve on it that slides in and out to create a loading force on the system. Uh, they can be moved in one direction to unload the system to move less gas and use less horsepower and they can be moved in the other direction to um, move more gas and of course increase the horsepower demands. So how we control these are with a pulse signal and we use, I'm going to kind of show you my lab setup right now, we use solenoid pulse control on terminals, digital outputs, one it's kind of hard to see back there, but one and two, and they drive um, relays, which we can use to drive uh, valves that are mounted on the compressor. Now, I have it simulated in my lab today that we're driving um, a uh, green light to symbolize that we're loading the unit, and we have a red light to symbolize that we're pulsing control of the, the unload situation. So. Why don't we use pulses? Because we don't want too rapid of a move. But I'm going to show you on the DE3000 how to set some of this stuff up. It's really easy. So I'm in a running state, and I'm going to go into Menu and press Enter to accept the default password of 1. Notice it says Correct. And I'm going to push Menu again, and I'm going to go into Edit Control Values and Edit controls and then I drop down to see where it says edit PRIM controls. Um, I still need to ask the engineers what that acronym stands for but FYI this is solenoid pulse control. So now I'm in here. So <clears throat> I'll just tell you I have this lab demonstration set up on suction. I have my control set point set at 20 PSIA um, again, this is a lab situation. I have my cycle time at one second, my proportional band at 31%, and I have a dead band of one pound. So I'm going to exit out of this, and I'm going to go back to the home screen, and we can see we're at 42.1, and we can see that my light is flashing to load the unit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the suction pressure down just below 20. Okay, 18.1. Now we can see that, hey, wait a minute, that red light is flashing pretty steady about equal time on, equal time off. Kind of cool. If you remember the green light when I was at 40 pounds was really flashing and almost to the point that it was staying on. So I'm going to go back into that menu and let's look at something. So if you notice cycle times at one second, and this is the um, amount of time that it stays, the light will stay off to, to give it a second to see, well, I just pulsed and moved my load valve in one direction. Let's take a second to see if we need to pulse it again. And then I have a proportional band of 31. The further, the lower this number, the more sensitive this value is. But what this means is the further my pressure gets away from my target point, the more or longer time it's going to leave the pulse on. So I'm going to do an example. I'm going to exit out again. Now I'm at 18 pounds and my target point was 20. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower my suction pressure further away And I'm going to stop at about 10 pounds. And what you can see is the duration of the light staying on is now much greater to where it's really trying to move fast. 
Now I'm not going to change any settings or any values here, but I'm going to go back into the menu and I'm going to go back into edit controls. And I'm just for fun going to change that proportional band to a higher value. Up there apparently only. And so I'm going to stay at 69 for a second. And we can look back at our red light and see it's not staying on quite as long as it did. Pretty cool, huh? So I'm going to take it back down closer to 30. Because I kind of like the response of that. i tell you what, we'll stop at 40. And notice I have a dead band. So the dead band controls, well, okay, my target's 20 PSI. And I'm saying, hey, if I get down towards 19 or towards 21, you know, that's my dead band. Don't move. Don't pulse at all. So at this point, I'm going to bring my pressure. Oops, I'm going to exit out so I can see my pressure. I'm going to bring my suction pressure back up closer oh, to 20. And as I increase it to 20 again, now that I'm coming closer, you can see this light slowing down yet again. So I'm about 18 and a half pounds. And now I'm going to bring it to 20. And I'm, of course, inside my dead band. So now that I'm inside my dead band, look at this. Nothing's flashing. So the compressor's happy. It likes the load. I'm staying steady. It likes the target capacity or suction that I've dialed in. But now I'm going to simulate the fuel pressure is coming back up. And I'm at 22.9 pounds. And we see that the light started to flash again. But if the suction continues to come up, now the load valve is going to move just ever so slightly every time that green light comes on. But as I get higher and higher on my suction, you're going to see, because of that proportional band, that green light stay on. So the further I get away from my target, the quicker it tries to respond and load this machine. And or, if I'm going in the opposite direction, tries to unload the machine. So guys, that's the end of this tutorial. I'll go review one more time to get back into the menu. Menu, Enter, Menu. Edit controls, enter. Edit controls again, enter. Edit PRIM controls. And there you go. There's a few more settings in the software that usually once set never have to be tinkered with again. This is just day-to-day -day tuning. For more information, please go to the altronic-llc.com. Thanks guys and have a good day.